The world of technology is rapidly moving towards IP. In every nook and corner, you will find people of all ages using their smartphones to stream music, movies, and video clips. When viewing TV, people request for video on demand, record their favorite shows, and want a video channel guide for easier surf through of programs. To keep pace with these developments, RF professionals are constantly calling our technical solutions department to find out about our products or the IP world in general. Because IP is the future. To bridge this gap, Blondetung has created this primer to help RF professionals and others not familiar with IP understand the basics of IP. Whenever you work with an IP network, there definitely are some questions that come across your mind. Through this primer, we will discuss some of the most basic things in the IP world like what is TCP IP? What is an IP address? How is an MPEG2 stream carried over IP network? What is multicast, unicast, and what is IGMP? This is not meant to be a full accounting of the IP world. It is much more complex than a few minute primer could cover. But it will give you a head start on the road to understanding IP. Now let's see what is TCP IP. Transmission Control Protocol TCP and Internet Protocol IP technically speaking are two distinct network protocols. However, the terminology is so commonly used that it is now the de facto standard used to transmit any type of data over the internet. TCP corresponds to transport layer, that is, the layer 4 of the OSI model, whereas IP corresponds to the network layer, that is, the layer 3 of the OSI model. The term TCP IP refers to network communications where the TCP transport is used to deliver data across IP networks. IP is a packet switch network, meaning that it breaks up information into smaller packets for transmission. Whether the packet is guaranteed delivery to the destination or not depends on the underlying transport protocol being used. Now let's see what is an IP address. It is a unique address assigned to each device on the network. The devices can be computers, printers, routers, or switches. IP address is a 32-bit binary number divided into four octets and generally represented in dotted decimal format. Every IP address is really made up of two parts, a network portion and a host portion. A network portion tells routers what group of devices a packet should go to and a host portion tells the routers what specific device among that group the packet should go to. Further, the IP addresses are divided into five classes, namely class A, B, C, D and E. How much of any given address is the network part and how much is the host part is determined by the class of the network. You would generally have a question like, what IP addresses should I assign to devices on a private or internal network? Well, as per RFC, Private networks must be assigned IP addresses that belong to the private IP address range, which is as mentioned below. You should note that these addresses cannot be transmitted on the public network. Our next question is, what are the basic network elements? Router. A router is a device that joins multiple networks together on a WAN or a LAN. Technically, a router is a layer 3 gateway device, meaning that it connects two or more networks. A router uses IP addresses to build its routing table and uses that information for routing the traffic. The next basic network element is a switch. A switch is a device that joins multiple computers together within one local area network. Technically, network switches operate at layer 2 of the OSI model. 
Switches are capable of inspecting data packets as they are received, determine the source and destination device of each packet, and forward them appropriately using MAC addresses. Our next question is, how is unmanaged switch different than a managed switch? Unmanaged switch is a plug-and-play device with fixed built-in configuration. You do not have any control over the switch. That is, you cannot change any configuration or telnet into the switch. It only allows the network devices on an Ethernet when connected to ports of the switch to communicate with each other. An unmanaged switch is suitable for small office, home or LAN environment. Whereas a managed switch, on the other hand, allows you to telnet into the switch, manage the configuration, prioritize the traffic, and create virtual LANs to distinguish the traffic. They are generally used in corporate environment. Managed switches are further categorized into intelligent and fully managed switches depending on the feature set. How is a MPEG-2 transport stream carried over an IP network? Currently, there are two methods that can be utilized for the carriage of MPEG-2 transport stream over IP. First is real-time transport protocol that is RTP and second is the user datagram protocol that is UDP. We will now see what is UDP. UDP is a transport layer that is layer 4 protocol for transmitting the data over the network. UDP is an unreliable protocol, meaning that it does not acknowledge the sender of the packets received or report the missing packets. However, it is typically used for streaming audio and video as you might see skips in video or hear some fuzz in audio clips, but UDP prevents the playback from stopping completely. Now let's see what is RTP. RTP is an internet protocol for transmitting real-time data such as audio and video. RTP itself does not provide any mechanism to ensure timely delivery or provide other quality of service guarantees. It relies on lower layer services, for example, UDP and TCP to do so. RTP provides suitable functionality for carrying real-time content for example, a timestamp and control mechanisms for synchronizing different streams with timing properties. Our next question is what is IP unicast and multicast? A unicast transmission is defined as a direct one-to-one -one communication. For example, when three viewers request for video from the same server, Three copies of the same video will be streamed over the network, each relaying to one of the viewer. Therefore, unicast is bandwidth intensive as more data is traveling over the network at once, which can bog down your LAN and interfere with other business systems. On the other hand, multicast transmission is defined as one-to-many communication. In multicast, there is no direct connection between the server and the viewers. The viewer will actually connect to a multicast IP address of the video stream, which is shared among all viewers. So the server only sends one single copy of the video stream using its designated multicast IP address and the viewer simply connects to the stream available over the network. How does IP multicast work? The server or the sender creates one copy of the stream and transmits it to the group multicast address which is in the range of 224.0.0.0 to 239.255.255.255. The client or viewer who wants to receive the stream uses the group multicast address to view the stream. It is the responsibility of the network elements such as routers and switches to replicate the stream and transmit it to the viewers wherever they are present on the network. Our next question is, should I use multicast or unicast for video streaming? 
Well, whether using multicast or unicast completely depends on the type of application that you are having. Multicast has the advantage of minimizing network traffic and optimizing bandwidth and installations where multiple users are accessing the same video source. How do I make IP multicast work with my firewall? Define a policy for the firewall that identifies which multicast groups are and aren't allowed. Our next question is, what is IGMP? IGMP is a communication protocol that provides a way for hosts to report its multicast group membership to the adjacent routers. IGMP uses two types of packets, host membership query and host membership report. This is how it works. A multicast router periodically sends out membership queries for its subnet and if any client exists who wants to join that group, the client replies back with a report message to confirm the membership. Once the membership is established, the multicast traffic is forwarded only to clients who are members of the multicast group. The lesson is, multicast allows you to save bandwidth, but if there is no mechanism to control the multicast traffic, then it would flood the network. How is video presented over IP network? Video over IP network can be divided into three categories. First is video broadcasting. Video broadcasting is a network-based one-way transmission of video file content. The endpoint is merely a passive viewer with no control over the session. Video broadcast can be either unicast or multicast from the server. For example, Video broadcasting can be used as a means of distributing trainings, presentations, meeting minutes, and speeches in a corporate environment. Second is video on demand. Video on demand allows a user to request on demand a streamed video that is stored on a server. This technology differs from broadcast video in that the user has the options to start stop, fast forward, or rewind the video. This technology is used for e-learning, training, marketing, entertainment, broadcasting, and other areas where the end user has needs to view the file based on their schedule and not the schedule of the video supplier. Third is video conferencing. Video conferencing is a combination of full duplex audio and video transmissions which allows people in two different locations to see and hear each other as if participating in a face-to-face -face conversation. Video conferencing can be point-to-point, -point, that is one user to one user, or multipoint, that is multiple users participating in the same session. We hope this has helped you get a head start on the IP basics. Please see the support section of Blondetongue's website for more help. Thank you.